Good evening, everyone. I'm Nada Paramnajad, this year's Signature Project Vice President. Thank you for joining us for today's group meeting on JLD Past and Present with Peggy Meyer, Director of Community Relations at Texas Scottish Rite Hospital for Children and Past Sustainer President. Before we begin, I want to reiterate today's learning objectives. At the end of this meeting, our members should, one, know more about the origins of the Junior League, and two, know more about the relationship between the Junior League of Dallas and Scottish Rite. As a reminder, this meeting is being recorded and is being conducted in webinar mode, which means that all participants are muted and off video for the duration of the meeting. The meeting credit is obtained by logging in within 15 minutes of the start of the meeting and remaining in the meeting until it concludes. You do not need to sign in via the chat. We have captured your sign in when you logged into Zoom. However, if you're logged into Zoom under a different name than is reflected in JLD.net, for example, if you are in our JLD records as Jennifer Smith, but you logged in as Caitlin Jones, or if you have dialed in via phone, you will need to email education at JLD.net to let us know who you are and the name or phone number under which you are logged in to obtain your meeting credit. We are only able to respond to meeting credit issues submitted via email. You must complete a meeting credit survey at the end of the meeting. The link will be displayed at the end of the meeting and we will send it out in the chat. In addition, you should have received a link to the survey in your reminder email and we will send the link out via email after the meeting. If you're watching the meeting on demand, you will need to follow the link displayed at the end of the meeting. Our goal is to upload meeting credits within five to seven days. Please use the Q&A feature for questions for the speaker. If you have technical issues and Zoom fails, please refer to your confirmation email and call or dial in. I'll now hand it over to Sarah Ballard for a brief announcement regarding the auction. Hello, thank you. I am Sarah Ballard on your JLD auction committee, and we are thrilled to bring you this year's auction to you virtually. Our auction is a very important event in our league year to raise funds for our community partners. So please save the date for Thursday, April 22nd through Sunday, April 25th for the virtual auction. The theme this year is Stronger Together Bidding from Afar. We have hundreds of amazing items from gift cards to beauty to dining and more. We also have our diamond poll brought to you by Cook's Diamonds where you can win 14 karat white gold huggy hoop earrings with 0.33 total karat diamonds. This year, it's free to participate in the auction and anyone can participate. You don't have to be a member of Junior League of Dallas. You can pre-register and the website is available on all of our social media on your homepage of Junior League of Dallas. So go on to any of our social media sites or the Junior League website for that link and please pre-register and pay attention to our social media for exciting announcements. Uh, Lastly, we are asking JLD members to promote the event on their own social media, so send it out to your friends and family. And thank you for joining us in this um, important part of our fundraising event. Now it is my honor to introduce our speaker for this evening, Peggy Meyer. A leader in the nonprofit and healthcare community for more than three decades, Peggy has generously lent her time and energy to numerous civic organizations. She has served as sustainer president of the Junior League of Dallas, chairman of the Linz Award Luncheon, and as a board member of the Hockaday School, KERA North Texas Public Broadcasting, and Camp John Mark. In addition, Peggy has also served in leadership positions on behalf of North Texas philanthropic events and organizations, including serving as 2020 chairman of Baylor's Celebrating Women event, chairman of the Kappa Kappa Gamma Tablescapes event, St. Paul Foundation's Legends Gala featuring Jay Leno, and Treasure, Treasure Street and the Tartan Golf Classic benefiting Scottish, Scottish Rite for Children. Peggy is currently involved with the Crystal Charity Ball, the Dallas Symphony Orchestra League, Junior League Sustainer Leadership Council, and the Hockaday Parents Association. Professionally, Peggy is the Director of Community Relations at Scottish Rite for Children, where she previously served as the Vice President of Public Relations for 13 years. In her current role at Scottish Rite, she serves on the leadership team preparing for the hospital's centennial celebration in 2021. 
Peggy received her bachelor's degree from Vanderbilt University. Her husband, Dr. Dan Meyer, is the chief of advanced cardiac circulatory support and chief of cardiac transplantation at Baylor Scott and White Health. Together, they are the proud parents of two teenagers, Ben, a senior at Highland Park High School, and Margot, a junior at the Hockaday School. Good evening, JLD Actives and Sustainers. I'm so pleased to be able to join you this evening for what I hope will be an interesting look back at the beginnings of the Junior League movement at the outset of the 20th century. In addition, we'll take a peek into the establishment of the JLD with a particular focus on early community projects and the role of JLD volunteers in shaping some of the earliest charitable organizations in our city. Let's begin by introducing you to Mary Harriman, certainly a visionary young woman for her time. At the turn of the 20th century, she decided to rally fellow debutantes in New York City to champion the cause of tenement dwelling families who were primarily immigrants on the Lower East Side of the city. In 1901, the Junior League for the Promotion of the Settlement Movement was founded as the first Junior League by this group of young women. The turn of the century was a time of fast-paced change in the world. The promise of freedom and opportunity lured many immigrants to America's shores. Settlement house workers tackled urban problems and provided desperately needed services to these new arrivals. At 18, Mary Harriman was preparing to enter Barnard College. Mary possessed a well-developed social conscience and was inspired one day by a lecture on the settlement work being done on New York's Lower East Side. She and her friend, Natalie Henderson, recruited their fellow debutantes to form a group to support the work of the settlement houses. And in 1901, the Junior League for the Promotion of the Settlement Movement was born. It became the first Junior League. The Junior League of Dallas was founded 21 years later by 10 original members. Early fundraising efforts included the JLD's first cookbook, rummage sales, and a tea room located in Highland Park Village, where volunteers waited tables and modeled fashions. In addition, members of the sewing committee made and sold dish towels and hand-knitted dresses. How far we have come. But let's consider the climate in our country in 1922. Women were just beginning to acquire many of the rights we take for granted today. During that same year, the Supreme Court unanimously upheld the 19th Amendment, affirming women's right to vote. Also in the headlines in 1922, Pope Pius XI deemed women's fashions so revealing that he urged a campaign against them. In 1925, JLD membership had grown to 87 active members, five provisionals and four transfers. The first provisional course with a training requirement began in 1926. JLD then and now a look back is certainly a daunting title to try to cover in the 30 minutes we have together. So I'm very encouraged that at the recent milestones luncheon, so expertly chaired by the dream team of JLD active Aaron Pope and sustainer Candace Winslow, that JLD Centennial co-chairs Margot Goodwin and Andrea Cheek shared the exciting news that there would be a Junior League of Dallas Centennial exhibit in the Hall of State during the run of the State Fair of Texas this fall. I am quite certain that this comprehensive JLD history will provide a much more extensive chronology than I could cover in one presentation. As you heard in the introduction, I have spent the vast majority of my professional career over three decades at the league's very first community project, Scottish Rite for Children in Dallas. During that time, I have witnessed firsthand and delved into the history of not only the relationship between the JLD and Scottish Rite, but also the fascinating history of the intersection of Oaklawn and Maple Avenues. Located just north of downtown Dallas, this specific corner was the birthplace and hub of all major medical institutions in our city from the late 1800s to the mid 1950s. Although it is not entirely visible in this photo, 
The original Parkland Hospital is located on the lower part of this slide. Parkland was constructed in 1894 on 17 acres, which was then located just outside the Dallas city limits. By 1913, that wooden structure was replaced with a modern brick building. Soon after, many charitable and medical institutions began to spring up on this corner, beginning with the Carroll Orthopedic Clinic and Scottish Rite Hospital in 1921. Over the following four decades, occupants of this intersection would grow to include Southwestern Medical School, Easter Seals, Hope Cottage, Dallas Child Guidance, Dean Learning Center, Freeman Clinic for Infants and Children, and Children's Hospital of Texas. What do all of these institutions have in common? They have all been supported by the Junior League of Dallas. In fact, Junior League volunteers were active in all three children's healthcare institutions that merged to become Children's Medical Center. And the league's first $100,000 grant went to Children's Medical Center for the completion of their neurology center in the 1960s. The story of Texas Scottish Rite Hospital for Children began in a one-room clinic run by Dallas's first orthopedic surgeon, Dr. W.B. Carroll, who began treating children with the crippling disease of polio free of charge. As patient demand exceeded the capacity of the clinic, Dr. Carroll and a group of Masons raised funds to charter the first Scottish Rite Hospital in 1921, and construction was completed in 1922. Built on three acres at the corner of Oaklawn and Maple Avenues, it was located on property adjacent to the Carroll Clinic. Scottish Rite for Children is honored to have been the first community project ever undertaken by the Junior League of Dallas nearly a century ago. At that time, physicians at Scottish Rite recognized a vital need for occupational department in order to teach independent living skills to young patients with physical challenges and limited mobility. This project became a key focus of the JLD's community involvement and a very popular placement. In 1936, the JLD added music appreciation, art instruction, sewing, woodcrafts, metalworks, and recreational therapy to the activities offered to patients. In the year 1937, more than 100,000 therapy treatments were performed by the JLD's occupational therapy department. After the Salk and Sabin vaccines eradicated polio in North America, Scottish Rite's medical staff was able to greatly expand treatment to a wide range of pediatric orthopedic conditions caused by disease, accidents, and congenital conditions such as scoliosis and club foot. The JLD has continued to generously support Scottish Rite since the earliest days of both organizations. Today, the league has 22 volunteers with placements at the hospital, including volunteers who facilitate an in-house art therapy program, also generously supported by funds from the JLD. Scottish Rite and the Junior League have proudly celebrated many milestone anniversary years together, including our joint 80th, which was chronicled in this 2002 edition of the Dallasite Magazine. Now, as our centennial year is upon us, Scottish Rite is honored to, be, to have been invited to be represented alongside the JLD at the league's centennial exhibit this fall at the State Fair of Texas, and also at the JLD Centennial Gala in the spring of 2022. And Scottish Rite is equally proud to highlight this important and long-standing relationship as we have included this JLD feature on the Centennial Timeline on the hospital's website, and it will also appear on a Scottish Rite Centennial Timeline to be published in a Dallas Morning News special Sunday section during the month of May. What a difference 50 years makes. When much of the medical community elected to relocate to Harry Hines and the medical district in the 1950s, Scottish Rite made the decision to stay at this intersection and eventually acquired all 15 acres to create this beautiful park-like setting with plenty of green space for kids to play and enjoy the outdoors. Scottish Rite and the city of Dallas were indeed fortunate when in 2006, Harlan Crow and Crow Holdings 
acquired and renovated the long vacant original Parkland Hospital, whose facade and century old trees were protected by a historical designation. Since 2008, this beautiful office park property has preserved historically significant artifacts and original structures while creating a hub of corporate significance. In the 1990s, the Association of Junior Leagues International established the Mary Harriman Community Leadership Award, honoring outstanding women who, like our founder, have made a lasting difference through their lifelong commitment to members. We are proud that Dallas JLD members Ruth Collins Sharp Altshuler, Lida Hill, and Jan Langbein have received the highest honor bestowed by the AJLI. Those of us who've been fortunate enough to enjoy JLD membership owe a deep debt of gratitude to these pioneering women in our own city and many others across the world that have shaped, enriched, and positively impacted their communities, neighborhoods, and those in need through junior league service. Your JLD training has armed you with the tools to lead, inspire, and make a true difference in our community. The old adage to whom much is given, much will be required, certainly holds true for the members of this great organization of empowered women. So go out and be a game changer. That is what is expected of a member of the Junior League of Dallas. True to their legacy, today's League members are at the forefront of tackling society's thorniest issues for the express purpose of enhancing the social, cultural, and political fabric of our society. As a result of this work, the Junior League has amassed an archive of irrefutable results and an indisputable reputation as thoughtful and influential change agents for the public good. Many young professionals, particularly civic-minded women, often ask me about ways to get more involved in their community in order to meet like-minded people and make a difference on behalf of a cause they believe in. Dallas is fortunate that many nonprofits have these types of programs. However, since I am part of the Scottish Rite team, I am partial to and most familiar with our program called Crayon Club. This membership group brings together charity, charitably-minded young professionals for around six events per year, ranging from mixers to meet and greets to volunteer service opportunities to evening dinner events focusing on education and advocacy. In addition to networking and social opportunities, Crayon Club members make a difference in the lives of children by raising funds to support the work and mission of Scottish Rite for Children. You can find more information on the hospital's website, scottishrightforchildren.org slash crayon club. And like many of our other activities involving volunteers in the community, of course, we've been paused because of COVID-19, but there is a light at the end of the tunnel and we hope to have our friends, our volunteers, and our, our organizations back on campus very, very soon. Now, a few of my JLD favorites. Role models and mentors, well, first and foremost would be my mother, George Sue Black who was the 1989 recipient of the JLD Sustainer of the Year Award. Also my dear friends, Lyndalyn Adams and Margot Goodwin. Some of my favorite roles and positions, I was extremely honored to be able to serve as Sustainer President and Dallasite Editor was also one of my most favorite positions. Favorite placements, R&D Committee for sure, um, and I also enjoyed external placements with Inter Interface Housing Coalition and Girls Incorporated. Some of my favorite committee icebreakers was when everyone on the committee wore a bridesmaid's dress to the meeting. That gen generated quite a bit of conversation. Also, an exercise called True Two Truths and a Lie, where you told three things about yourself that were personal things, and two of them were true, and one was a lie, and your fellow committee members had to guess which one was the lie. Lifelong friends through the Junior Jun League of Dallas. I've made so many, but um, the ones that continue them to last are the ones that I made and some of the original committees. 
my PR committee teammates, Jennifer Lassiter and Penny Sullivan are two to come to, that come to mind as long standing friends that I made through the junior league. Um, my contact information is right there as well. And I'm happy to um, answer any questions by email, but I know some of the wonderful education committee who I owe so much to for helping me put this together has been keeping track of the chats. And um, so I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you so much, Peggy. And just for the group that's online, we do have the Q&A. We did not make mention of it at the beginning. So if you do have a question for Peggy, please submit it through the, the Q&A icon at the bottom of your screen. And while we wait for some of those questions to come in, Peggy, we really appreciate you reviewing um, some of the history of the JLD. One question that comes to mind is for some of our newest members. You, you went through a couple of your favorite favorite things at JLD, but any suggestions on how some of our newest members new to the JLD could, could get involved quickly and get connected quickly? Do you have any, any placements or suggestions there? Well, you know, what I, what I usually tell the young people is, you know, find something you're passionate about, whether it's a junior league project or a volunteer opportunity in the community. Um, that's a way to get inside an organization. And that's kind of the one of my entrees into Scottish Rite. I think once you're a part of the family as a volunteer or through a, pro, through a junior league project, you get much more familiar with the organization and they with you. And there may be an opportunity for um, future involvement, whether it's professionally or with a larger group of volunteers. But um, my passion specifically are um, women and children in particular. And so I've kind of gravitated towards um, and families. And so my focus has certainly been in those areas. But I would just say follow your passion and give your time and talent. And um, that's a real way to get involved. You're going to meet people uh, that have similar interests to you and are involved in a similar cause. Thank you. Talk a little bit more about the, the tea room that the Junior League had in the <laughs> Well, um, I wasn't around for the tea room, but um, I did do some research. It was very interesting. Um, the picture that I showed, when I first happened upon it, I thought it was so noble. I thought it was pictures of uh, junior league members in nursing garb. And I thought how wonderful that was, that they were fulfilling that mission from a medical standpoint. But then I learned that those were actually their tea room outfits. So I read a little bit, I actually read from some past president's um, interviews, and one of them said that her mother had been a member of the Junior League in the 20s, and in 1929, they called her to ask her if she wanted to be a member of the Junior League, and she said she did, and they said, okay, be at Highland Park Village tomorrow to wait tables in the tea room. So I think that that was an early effort by the league to try to raise a little money. And like we said, the role of women was a little different back in the 20s, but um, the tea room was definitely um, a start of one of the league's activities. Very nice. And on that same topic, we saw the video at the beginning of the A, the ALGI, the AJLI, excuse me, in their history. Do you know exactly how the Dallas Junior League started? Well, I just know that there were 10 women who founded it. Mm -hmm. And, and I, don't, I don't know much about the early projects other than what I mentioned. I think they started small with you know, fundraising through rummage sales, raising money so they could there. I know that they did have a children's convalescent home that they originally opened with the funds that they raised but they felt like that really wasn't meeting a need in the community. And that that's when they went searching for a community project and found fortunately Scottish Rite. Very nice, I just had another question come in. Um, can you give us a peek into some of the centennial plans that you've been a part of? Oh, that's such a great question. I, I would be happy to, um, you know, again, with, COVID, it's, it's a bit of a challenge, but um, at Scottish Rite, we have launched a new, I don't know if some of you might've seen our new TV spots, um, highlighting some of our patients and, and it's called, look what I can do. And it shows kids doing all sorts of different activities. 
And so we're planning a celebration in, um, we have a Treasure Street event that many of you may be familiar with in the fall. And that's usually our signature fundraising event. And this year it's gonna be bigger and better and um, hopefully in person, but it's always outside on the hospital property. So we'll obviously be taking every precaution if we do have a live event, but that will kind of be our signature event. And we will have events with the kids. We'll have a giant cake. Um, again, we have the banners on the exterior of our building. And one of the key things that I've been working on is we're gonna have an act actual centennial exhibit inside the hospital that will have a, a complete timeline, interactives, video towers, enhancements to our conference center. So we'd love to have everybody come by and see um, our wonderful centennial commemoration timeline. The gentleman that's working on it is, uh, out of Boston and his company also did a lot of the exhibits at the Perot Museum and also uh, Mr. Perot's display of all his artifacts at the, the headquarters of the new Perot. Very exciting. Oh, we can't wait. A couple uh, well, we have lots to celebrate along with the Junior League. So <laughs> uh, we, like I said, I was so excited when Margo Goodwin invited us to join in with the Junior League at the Hall of State. And we're gonna be having some surprises from the Scottish Rite standpoint for the attendees. There's an anticipated 200,000 people who are gonna come through that exhibition. So it's a great opportunity for both organizations. Oh, that's incredible. Uh, along those same lines of, of Scottish Rite, you mentioned the Crayon Club mm -hmm. as those the social groups. Do you have any others that you would recommend folks? get involved and in. I know that one's a little bit near and dear to your heart, but. Well, um, I, I, from what I, my understanding is, I think they have them at Ronald McDonald House. The, the symphony has a junior group. Um, whether you're interested in the arts or medicine, you know, do the, the, more, the uh, DMA has a, a museum group, I believe the Nasher Sculpture Center. So I think that um, if you just go online and search some of the, even the volunteer center website, um, which is kind of a clearinghouse in Dallas for placement of volunteers would probably have a lot of listings of programs that are that are more tailored to a young professional audience. Very nice. And then a couple questions. Um, you know, for members looking to go sustainer, how do you suggest they continue to stay involved after being active? Gosh, you know, that is as as a sustainer. Um, and having been a sustainer leader, that's one of the biggest challenges that we have is how to continue to engage um, sustainers, particularly young sustainers who are just going sustainer for the first time. Mm -hmm. I think the Sustainer Leadership Council has done a tremendous job of coming up with some new interest groups. I know there've been a lot of interest groups over the years that have um, people that are more advanced in age, but I know there's lots of groups that have been formed recently that are meant to um, be of interest to a younger group with uh, groups of um, women with young families, you know, women who are interested in golf. So I think there's lots of um, inroads being made because this, the sustainer time is the most fun time. I mean, it's, it's great because, you know, there's wonderful programming. I think Nancy Gopez, our sustainer president, despite the the pandemic has done a tremendous job of having programming at the Arboretum and we'll have a tour of North Park Center. I think there's there's lots of great outings as well. And just um, go try a few out. Um, that's all I would say is there's, there's always friends to be made in all generations. And so I think sustainer is a very special category and the league really loves when people go sustainer and especially the younger folks if you stay involved um, i think you're going to get a lot out of it another question along those lines of, of a sustainer is how do you know when you're ready to go sustainer what's your advice oh well it's well it, it's definitely not an age number um, i think once upon a time it was a big 4-0 and i think now it's it's really based on if you are still feeling engaged with um, being an active member of the league and making a contribution from an active perspective in the community, I would encourage you to stay as long as you are, as you feel engaged and connected. 
Um, I think, you know, if, if a lot of your friends are going sustainer, that might be the time to do it because then you have a built in group of friends. And that's kind of how I transitioned. There were several of my friends who were going to go sustainer and we started to do a lot of the activities together and, and it really has been fun. And then I've just met, um, like I said, women from all generations who uh, have really enriched my life. Peggy, you mentioned, um, or your children were mentioned at the, the beginning of this presentation. What have they learned from watching you serve with the JLD? Oh gosh, that's a great question. Well, um, I was a mom kind of late in life. And so um, I have schlepped them around to uh, many of the things that I've been involved with, many of which are league activities. And I think that they have seen the value of getting out in the community and also um, they've they really have a sensitivity now and and being around Scottish right you know I mean they're I've, I'm really encouraged that my professional and volunteer experiences have exposed them to all different people of all different abilities and I think that they have a much greater respect for diversity of all types whether it's um, mobility diversity whether it's ethnicity whether it's social economic diversity. So I think that that's broadened their view beyond their Dallas neighborhood. And just a quick reminder, we have a couple minutes left. So any other questions you all would like to, to send in, send through the Q&A icon, please, at the bottom of the screen. Um, let me see. Another question that, that came in is, what do you miss about being an active? Oh gosh, a lot. Um, I think that I really enjoyed the camaraderie at all the committee meetings and the camaraderie at all of the projects that I volunteered at. Um, I think that it was, it was like having your own little new club each year. I mean, the committees you were on, the projects you did, there was always a changing group of friends and an opportunity to meet new people. And that's why, you know, I think it's important to stay connected as a sustainer, even though you're not required to attend the things any longer. Um, I, I still miss a lot of those regular meetings and friends that I was able to see every other week or every month and get a chance to check in and visit with them. As a matter of fact, I was introduced to my husband by one of my good friends in the league, so. Oh, very neat. A couple more just came in. Do you mind, you mentioned in, in a, on a slide of a few of your JLD favorites, the R&D committee. Mm -hmm. Do you mind explaining and walking the, the group through what that is? Well, I don't know what it's what the iteration is now or what it's called now, but that is the committee that researches and vets and presents on behalf of all of the community project prospects. So if the league is considering taking on one of the many community projects and what category it falls into, the R&D committee at that time was charged with having researchers that went out into the community and interviewed and researched each project and brought it back to the committee for vetting. And there would be um, a number of votes taken and those that obviously received the most votes were then part of the community program for that year. Gotcha, and we have a couple more come in. Um, I think you mentioned earlier, um, you know, about when we talked about new members getting involved, just, just finding a passion. Um, how did you choose some of your placements too? You mentioned a couple of different placements. You mentioned passion. Were they related to your, your career or not? Well, actually, I felt like since I my career was at Scottish Rite that I kind of have the children's health care piece covered. <laughs> so I was interested in branching out into other community agencies that, that I was not as familiar with. So Interfaith Housing Coalition gave me a chance to see what families who have um, who are job insecure, food insecure, that um, Interface Housing, Housing Coalition was able to house them and give them job training and give them daycare for the families and food while they were training them to be able to interview and have a job and break the cycle of poverty. So that was one that was very meaningful and Girls Inc. obviously focuses on young, younger girls 
and giving them a pathway for success that they might not be able to see in their own homes or neighborhoods, give them uh, role models, women role models, um, younger women role models, and as a testament to what they can do um, and that they're not limited by their surroundings or their socioeconomic needs. And here we've got another one and, and we'll probably end on, on this one here. Um, what do you think volunteering will look like at Scottish Rite when we return to campus? Do you think it'll change at all? That is a great question. And yeah, project um, here. we have been lost without our volunteers. I will tell you, we have over 800 volunteers. And so um, they almost are the same number as our staff. And it's a much lonelier place without them. But obviously our first priority is the health and safety of our volunteers and our patients. And so I think that um, it's very important because we don't know when the patients are gonna be able to be protected or vaccinated. It's very important that we protect, many of our volunteers are in an age group where you know, we don't want them to be exposed to anything um, too early. So as soon as we can have, as soon as we can have the volunteers back, as soon as we can have our popcorn, popcorn machine popping again, we will be so happy. So I know that we're, we're not going to be able to have our junior volunteer program this summer, which is a disappointment, but we're gonna be able to welcome our volunteers back just as soon as it's safe to do so. Well, that's exciting to hear. I, I told you that was the last question, but I do have one more because it's, it sure. relates to Scottish Rite as well in your career. Sure. How did the JLD help you with, with accomplishments you were able to, to achieve in your career? Or is there a certain placement or a certain group of mentors that were able to help you and actually your, your career? Oh, I owe so much to the JLD. It's, it's like you're standing on the shoulders of giants. I know we talk about it all the time. But there were women that inspired me beginning with my mom, of course, but um, all, all along, women who came from various backgrounds, various professions that mentored me, um, that I remember um, the Dallas side editor coming to do an article um, at the time on Scottish Rite and how impressed I was with, with her in particular. But I think my, my ability to speak in front of people came from the junior league, my ability to work well in a group and be a team player came from the junior league. Um, branching out into leadership roles in, in volunteer organizations. I, I was trained well as junior league members are in how to, how to lead, how to conduct a meeting, how to listen respectfully and how to have a dialogue that's civil and constructive um, because that's what a lot of the junior league work is, is building consensus and finding the best path forward and no one opinion should take precedence over another so it's really I think I learned collaboration I learned leadership I learned respect for all people um, but um, mostly I just I really have made lifelong friends that you know through thick and thin have been there for me but definitely got great training from the league as well as fabulous friends well, we really appreciate your time today. Thank you so much for walking us through our league's histories and even some of our very first community projects. And then also just with the focus on Scottish Rite, it's need to learn about where we've come from and where we are now. So we, we just appreciate all the work you put into um, the, the pictures and the historical context. And then also just your advice on how we can incorporate our experience in the league with with our professional careers. So thank you so much, Peggy. And for those of you on the call, we really appreciate you all logging on to, to tonight's group meeting. Um, we'll show a screen here in just a second that is the meeting survey link. You can either type this link in your browser or you can scan the QR code. You will also receive an email with this meeting survey link. So three different ways to, to give us feedback on this meeting, but Again, thanks to, to Peggy Meyer. We just really appreciate um, your comments and context. And um, we look forward to, to serving more 
uh, in the league in this upcoming year. Thank you so much. Claire, it's been my pleasure. Thanks to you and the entire education committee. You made it very easy. And I'm just glad to be able to share stories and appreciate everybody who attended. So thank you all very much.